While I've only just started the process of sowing and transplanting vegetable plants into the outside gardens, the plants in the protected microclimate of the polytunnel garden are well established and some of them are already highly productive. In the maritime climate of Ireland, I think a polytunnel is particularly valuable as it offers a possibility of growing heat-loving crops like tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers, which would otherwise be quite difficult to grow in this climate, as well as creating ideal growing conditions in the spring and in the autumn for many other crops. As one of the seven family-scale gardens in this Red Gardens project, I'm managing this polytunnel garden as if a family only had a polytunnel to grow in, and therefore I'm trying to ensure that there is a reasonably steady supply of a diverse range of fresh vegetables throughout the year. This objective is different than how I would prefer to manage a polytunnel, which involves growing fewer of the heat-loving crops, which I would prefer to grow a lot of, in order to make space for a lot of other crops. And I'm also growing a range of different types of vegetables that would normally not be grown in a polytunnel here in Ireland. At the moment, in the middle of April, there are about 20 different crops growing in this 100 square meter polytunnel. They can be divided into five different groups, based on when they were sown, when they can be harvested, and to a certain extent on their interruptibility, or whether I can remove the crop to make way for another crop, but still get a reasonable yield. The first group of plants was sown last summer or autumn and became well established before the winter. The parsley plants were transplanted into this garden last summer and I've been harvesting steadily from them since the autumn, but they have become really productive in the last month or so. Unfortunately, these are biennial plants and are now starting to go to seed due to the significant increase in warmth in this polytunnel and I'll probably dig them out shortly. The charred plants were sown last autumn and grew slowly all through the winter, but since the beginning of February they have been hugely productive. Similar to the parsley, these biennial plants have been triggered by the heat into going to seed or bolting, but the different varieties that I planted are responding at different times. The perpetual spinach was the first to shift into seed production mode about a month ago, and the ruby chard has done the same over the last few weeks. The Swiss chard, on the other hand, is only just beginning to show signs of bolting, and I've also found it to be the most productive variety, so definitely something that I'll plant more of next season. It is a shame that these biennial plants couldn't continue to produce for another month or so, but they've been very useful, providing lots to eat when there was very little else available in the early spring, and it would be good to pull them out fairly quickly in order to be able to plant in another fast-growing crop before the summer. The second set of crops in this garden were planted in late autumn or early winter last year and include potatoes, onions, garlic and broad beans or fava beans. I'm growing early potatoes, or actually I planted six different varieties of early potatoes, which could be ready to harvest in May, but they will produce a lot more if I leave them to grow until June or even through to July. The garlic is an unusual plant to grow in a polytunnel, as they grow so well in our climate outside, even over winter but it really is a useful crop and significantly more productive and earlier when grown under plastic. It's also fairly unusual to devote such a large bed of the polytunnel to onions, but I found that these onions grown from overwintering sets provide a really useful crop at the beginning of the summer, well before any onions are available from outside. And it's also more reliable to dry them off and to cure the bulbs in the controlled environment of the polytunnel. The broad beans or fava beans are also quite a strange crop to grow in the polytunnel, but they grow so quickly in the springtime in this shelter and are already flowering and starting to set pods. These four crops will all produce higher yields in the polytunnel than they can outside and much earlier in the season. But they do take up a sizable part of this garden and won't be ready in time to allow the highly productive warm season crops to replace them. Instead, these plants will be followed by cooler season crops for autumn and early winter harvest, and this is part of the trade-off of shifting the focus away from the higher value heat-loving crops. The third set of crops were all sown in late winter or early spring this year, and include carrots, beetroot, kohlrabi, turnip, and even some broccoli and cauliflower. The protection of the polytunnel offers ideal conditions for these plants to become established and to grow quite strongly much earlier in the season than their counterparts in the outside gardens. The turnip have grown remarkably quickly with the first batch already being harvested and I've even tried sowing a second batch in the space that I recently cleared of charred plants. I hope they'll be ready to harvest before the pepper plants will need to go into this bed of the garden. The beetroot plants are growing very strongly and I'll likely be able to start to harvest small roots within a month. The kohlrabi plants are coming along quite well, and they might also be ready for harvesting within a month. The carrots, on the other hand, are definitely the slower growing plant in the set. 
I could harvest them quite small and early and free up the bed for another crop. But I prefer to wait as long as possible to let these plants continue to grow so that it can get a much higher yield. But this means that the bed won't be ready for another crop until well into the summer. The broccoli and cauliflower plants are a bit in between the two and it's a bit risky to try to grow these plants before the eggplants or aubergine plants will need to be transplanted into this garden bed. Unlike most of the other crops currently growing in this polytunnel, these plants aren't really interruptible and until these brassicas finally produce a reasonable size head for harvesting, this garden bed won't be available for the summer crops, which could be a problem as I'm not so sure about the timing. The fourth set of vegetables are all salad greens that I sowed in late winter. These include a bed each of kale, rocket, and a mix of spicy salad greens that I'm growing as a cut and come again crop, which is perhaps the easiest and fastest way to grow these vegetables. A large bed of spinach is perhaps my favorite crop at this time of year, and I manage it by harvesting individual leaves, and while this may be a lot of work, it's the way that I prefer to do it, and it ends up being a highly productive crop. The large area of lettuce was sown in drills and I've been progressively harvesting by thinning out individual immature plants until each of the remaining plants has enough space to continue to grow. I'll likely start to harvest the outer leaves from the larger plants rather than let them produce a mature head of lettuce as this will likely produce the most from this bed in the available amount of time. Even though they are managed in different ways, all of these crops are grown and harvested in a way that is interruptible, as they can be removed at any time when the bed is needed, and I've already harvested quite a bit from each of them. A lot will depend on the weather over the next few weeks or month. If the weather stays cool, then these salad crops will continue to produce a lot of tender leaves. But if the weather gets warmer, then they will become stressed with the extra heat in the polytunnel, and it would be better to pull them out earlier and get the warm season crops into the soil instead. The final type of crop that I'm growing in this polytunnel this spring are microgreens, which are also the fastest crop that I could grow, and a crop that I'm only beginning to experiment with. I did try growing these microgreens in flats and trays over the winter, but a few months ago I started to grow them in the soil in the polytunnel bed, and I've been quite successful at producing pea shoots, radish, and sunflower microgreens. The entire crop of microgreens are harvested very early, when the plants are still very young, and I've been sowing a new batch once a week and harvesting two or three weeks later. This rapid growth and harvesting means that the soil can be turned over and prepared for another sowing fairly quickly. I'm still experimenting with the possibilities of microgreens, but I find them to be a fairly productive and useful crop, especially for filling in gaps of availability of other vegetables, or for producing a crop when a garden bed is going to be empty for a few weeks. Over the next few months I will be removing a lot of these crops to make space for the heat loving crops and in some cases there may be an issue with timing. I'm planning to plant cucumbers and climbing beans into the bed of this garden that is currently occupied by the microgreens and the beetroot, which should be fine. The tomato plants will eventually replace the lettuce and spinach and it will be a bit of a judgement call as to when this will happen and it depends a bit on the weather and how much longer I think I can keep the tomato plants in pots. I might remove some of the lettuce and spinach plants to make space down the centre of the bed for the tomato plants and intercrop for a while where I can continue to harvest some salad leaves while allowing the tomato plants to become properly established. A few squash plants will be transplanted into the bed that's currently occupied by the kohlrabi which should be fine and courgette or zucchini plants will replace the beds of rocket, kale and spicy greens. If the weather doesn't heat up too much, I could clear a space in the salad greens that's just big enough for the courgette and zucchini transplants, and continue to harvest the greens for a few more weeks by intercropping the two crops. I'm planning to put in pepper plants after the turnip and chard, and it looks like most of the space will be available shortly, although I might need to abandon the more recently sown batch of turnip, as there may not be enough time for them to produce their roots. But the trickiest issue could be with the aubergine or eggplants, which will have to wait until the cauliflower and broccoli plants have produced harvestable heads. And this will likely mean that I'll need to continue to pot up these plants into larger and larger pots so that they can continue to grow while they wait for their bed to become available. And hopefully this strategy will be successful. All of these beds that are designated for heat loving crops only make up about half of the growing space in this polytunnel garden. The other half of the garden beds will be replaced by other types of vegetables in the summer for autumn and even winter harvesting. This makes sense that about half of the space of this polytunnel garden will be growing plants for harvesting in the summer and early autumn, and the other half will be growing plants for harvesting later in the season. 
This is the challenge for this garden, to ensure that there's always a sizable portion of the garden producing at any one time. Right now I'm delighted with how things are going, and it has been quite successful and currently really productive, with a lot more to come. But it seems that it's easier for me to manage the plantings in the spring in this polytunnel garden, as I haven't been so good at keeping up with the succession of plantings later in the season for the autumn and winter, and that's my big challenge for this year. But this is my favourite time of year in my favourite garden where everything looks so beautiful and there's so much to harvest and eat now and there's other crops that I'm eagerly anticipating but I'm really looking forward to the heat and the fruits of the summer. I'm currently growing in two polytunnels, this one and a slightly larger one in the black plot. And it's really interesting to see how different they look at this moment, reflecting the different approaches that I'm taking with them. In the other polytunnel, I'm prioritizing the tomatoes, cucumbers, and other heat-loving crops. And up until two weeks ago, it was covered in a overwintering green manure, which was really interesting. I'm planning to make another video about this later in the season when I get a better sense of what the impact of this green manure was. And if you're interested in this and all the other explorations that I'm doing in this Red Gardens project, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you'd like to support my project even more, to ensure that I can continue to afford to make these videos, please check out the options in the description below. But most importantly, thank you for watching.